Well guys, it's daylight saving time and uh, here in Florida it gets dark so early so I got off work and I came to my parents house to film this video. Um, keep in mind, I will have some quarter mile runs with the draggy and time, like time slips for you guys at the end of this video and trust me, it should surprise you because it definitely surprised me. Before we get started talking about power and stuff, we did get some new taillights, so let's check that out. These things look really nice. So these are sequential, so the turn signals are gonna have some movement to them. And wow, they just look so clean. These ones are just the stock ones I've had. Yeah, the plastic's falling apart. I wrapped them just because these ones get moisture in them all the time. So they have little cracks and stuff. I tried to glue them up, but the plastic's so fragile, they just keep breaking. So I wrapped them to try to hide imperfections. And then everyone's saying, oh, tinted headlights are ricer and stuff. But I'm like, I only did it because it looked like shit. You just unclip this back piece and pull back some of the trim here. And then unscrew this guy this car is actually really easy to work on like i find most things come apart easier than the mark 6 gti on these stock ones that gray plastic piece kept wanting to separate so and look the plastic is so fragile i think i tried to change a bulb in here and it just totally fell apart sorry buddy so let's go ahead and put the new one in. Stock headlights did not pass the durability test. Let's put the new ones in. We're just gonna plug it in. There, that one's in. So, just need to screw this guy back in. We're good to go. Well guys, taillights look awesome. It's flickering because of camera frame rate, I guess. But you get the idea. And here is the finished product again. I really like those with the sequential tails. And one thing for you guys, if you're watching this and you're in the United States, I think something with these taillights is slightly different than UK and Australian stuff. Um, go, I'm gonna show a screenshot of like VADCOM or OBD11. You need to go in there and turn off the fog light dimming because for some reason it would make the taillights flicker. I'll show you a video of that and they would flicker and then they would dim and almost turn off with the running lights. But then the brake lights would work perfect. So once you turn that dimming off, taillights look great. Everything else is looking good on the car except I had one little issue. I went over like a kind, not even that deep of a hole. It was like a decline into the street and I totally destroyed my Maxson splitter. So I, I ordered, it was already getting chipped up. I ordered a new one like months ago and it's still not gonna be here till January so I'm just gonna run it like this for now. I it's, I still think it looks better with it on cracked than without it So you're probably gonna want to know what has changed on the car since the last video Well, it's making a lot more power guys According to V Dino, it's making somewhere between 550 and 600 horsepower. I'll show you that I upgraded the uh, water meth injection i went to higher nozzles because kind of running out of fuel um i put a, a higher flow fuel filter coming from the fuel pump i think that was a limiting factor we're still falling short on fuel here we might have to do like a whole race line setup from the low pressure fuel pump to the uh um, injectors or the high pressure fuel pump the high pressure fuel pump is looking good and we're just dropping from low pressure fuel pump. I have the dual pump set up from, from Precision Raceworks. The way that works is the initial 450 Walbro pump turns on like with regular car usage. And then once it hits um, 13 PSI, there's a switch. 
um, there's a switch. So you can see um, the switch I have like tucked up near here close to the boost and the switch will turn the secondary pump on. So then there's two 450s uh, pushing fuel. So I definitely have enough fuel pump back there. It's just, I think, I think it's gonna be either our lines or the uh, fuel filter that is a bottleneck for us. Once we get that figured out, we should be able to get maybe 650. Um, I think this motor's probably good for 700, but I don't, I mean, Guys, you'll see at the end, this car is already really fast. I'm really happy with it. It's such a good looking car. I love the way this car looks. Look how big the hood is. I don't know if I showed you yet, but I have the velocity stack, so there's no filter. I'm in Florida. Things are pretty clean, at least where I am. I'm not worried about crap getting into the filter. It's not like there's, it's not like it's open air. I mean, there's definitely if stuff were to get in here, it's, I, there's no rock scene up in there. So, <clears throat> other than power, we also did another huge upgrade. It totally changed this car. So it's something we needed a long time. Uh, TVS transmission tune. I went with stage four because I have the SSP stage two clutches. And guys, that was, it has to be one of the best upgrades I did to this car. It, um actually before it was starting to slip at higher rpms even with the stage two clutches i'll show you a video of that and you can see at the top of fourth gear it would kind of slide with the rpms would go up faster and then the um speed was like not really moving that much because the clutches were slipping so now look what we have we have wait let me see if i can get it to stop here it's touchy we have 3,000. There we go. 3,000, about 4,000, and then all the way up to 6,000 RPM launch control. And I, if I hold it at 6,000, it gets up to like uh, 10 PSI. I'm definitely not gonna be launching it like that on the street because it just spins all four. Right around 4,000, I'm gonna show you guys in the video too, right around 4,000 it launches pretty good and that's around five to six PSI. My favorite things with the uh, transmission tune, obviously number one is it ups the clamping pressures like super aggressively. So no more clutch slippage. Probably the transmission could hold all the power now without the upgraded clutches, but the clutches, I mean, the new ones, they have more surface area and they're supposed to be better, like uh, not getting really hot and um, just driving in D or sport is a lot better now. It's way more aggressive. It'll hold the RPMs longer and it won't shift you down like in, like it won't try to upshift you to like six gear when you're going 40 or whatever. And you just feel, and then it just, the car feels dead. Now it will actually hold the RPMs. It feels really nice. Oh, my heat seat's on here. My back was a little sore. But yeah, guys, I'm no longer relying on the watt box for this car. Um, the watt box is a great option if you don't have access to a TVS tuner to, because you want to build boosts to launch. But yeah, I think that's it. Should we go do some hits uh, in Mexico? Well guys, we're now in Mexico. You're spinning around on the steering wheel, on the GoPro. Let's see what we can do. Let's start it a little bit lower this time. A lot of spinning on the street, but that one felt pretty good. Honestly, so happy with this car. That was the first hit today. I didn't, like, I just came out here, did a hit, it did a 10.58, spinning like so much, and it still did a 17, 1.74, 60 foot, and it trapped 135. This car is awesome, I'm so happy with it. Like, I honestly don't wanna mess with it too much more. I just wanna get a little more feeling, because feeling is a little bit scary. If something minorly went wrong, we're like right on the edge of not having enough fuel, um, like bad gas or something like that, but, 
yeah guys this car is a beast let me know what kind of videos I should make with this now um, what do you do you want to see me race some people I'm not too big into racing people on the street kind of scary maybe we should take it to the drag strip see this thing hook up if this had a 1 6 60 foot who knows what is gonna happen like thanks for watching guys I'll see you in the next one peace